Well, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm glad you're tuning in. Hope you're doing well. This video is about the stretch factors of a polynomial function, and uh, we're going to be talking about how polynomial curves are stretched or compressed or flipped uh, based on that stretch factor in the equation. Uh, incidentally, this video will not have anything to do with the process of finding x-intercepts, which a lot of, you'll see a lot of videos about that. That's not what's going on here in this one. This is just about uh, stretching or compressing polynomial functions. And all the equations that you'll see will be in factored form, as a matter of fact. Uh, all right, so first, uh, let's just talk about what a stretch factor actually is. And uh, one th way to think of a stretch factor is that it's a number that multiplies all the factors in a polynomial equation. So if the equation is in factored form, a stretch factor might be a number multiplying all of those factors. It itself is not really considered a factor of the polynomial, but it's more just, like I say, a number multiplying. Sometimes you might say it's a scalar multiplier of the polynomial. Um, however, uh, the other thing is that if the polynomial is written in its standard form, which is quite common, the leading coefficient of that polynomial is actually the stretch factor. So uh, you might see it in a couple of different ways, depending on how your equation looks. Uh, for example, here's uh, an equation in factored form, and that 3 there is the stretch factor, whereas this other equation in standard form uh, it's the leading coefficient there. That's, that's where the stretch factor shows up, okay? Um, let's take a look at, uh, so that's what a, the stretch factor is, and let's just discuss briefly what it does. Uh, one of the first things that it does, really, is it just controls the steepness of the curve, and it might do that in a couple of different ways. Um, one way is if that stretch factor number is a number greater than 1, then it makes the curve steeper. It simply makes the highs higher and the lows lower. It's a vertical exaggeration of the curve, you might say, or we would say, more simply, a stretch factor. However, if that stretch factor number is a number less than 1, or more precisely between 0 and 1, it makes the curve less steep. It's kind of a compression then. and you know, I don't think you would call it a stretch if it's actually squashing it down. But, um, but that's what happens if the stretch factor number is less than 1. If, however, that stretch factor number is negative, less than 0, then that flips the graph over the x-axis. It reverses the orientation of the graph, you might say it that way. And it could also make it steeper or squash it, compress it, uh, in, at the same time as reflecting it. So um, stretch factor can kind of have two effects on the graph sometimes. Um, let's take a look at some graphs, actually. So I've drawn three curves here, and this is a screenshot. And unfortunately, you can't see the third factor in the equation there, but it's, it's x minus 2. Um, you can see the three x-intercepts of this uh, third-degree curve there at negative 3, negative 1, and positive 2. And in the first one, the blue one, that's the middle one, uh, there's no stretch factor, or you might say the stretch factor is 1, but that's kind of silly. Anyway, uh, there isn't really a stretch factor of that curve. It has not been stretched. However, in the orange curve, you can see that the stretch, stretch factor is 2. And if you look at its effect, yeah, the highs are higher and the lows are lower. It's been vertically exaggerated or just stretched. It does not change the orientation or the end behavior. It doesn't change where the x-intercepts are. It just kind of changes what happens in between them, really. Um, that third example there where my stretch factor is a number less than 1, you can see that it has squashed it down. It's flattened it out. And... Um, the, uh, the ver vertical stretch has been decreased, I guess you might say. Um, if my, s oh, oh, look at that. I forgot about those. The uh, y-intercepts there, that's really a good thing to check uh, on these curves. That's, of course, where x equals 0. And you can calculate this, the y-intercept if you know all the factors. And so you can figure out, that's a really handy way to figure out what the stretch factor is sometimes. We'll do an example of that a little bit later on. But always good to pay attention to the y-intercepts of these graphs. Okay, let's look at another one there where, uh, again, it's the same blue curve there on the top uh, on the left side. But on the second one, that red curve there, I just put a negative 1. So my stretch factor is kind of like negative 1. And really all it does is reflect it across the uh, x-axis. Okay, you've probably seen that before. Um, 
Let's talk a little bit uh, about how you can actually determine what the stretch factor is sometimes. And that's a really useful thing to be able to do. So here's a curve, and uh, you can see it's a third degree polynomial. You might notice that the right end is going down, so it's in a negative orientation. Uh, you might also notice what the x-intercepts are. You can see them there, negative 2, positive 1, and positive 3. And um, so I, I can see that it's uh, negatively oriented. Um, I don't know what that, if it's just a negative 1 or what, but I do know that I've got those three factors there, x plus 2, x minus 1, and x minus 3, that I can work with. And if I just say, okay, well, I'm going to figure out there's some number a that is multiplying all those things to make it go uh, down, I'll see if I can figure that out. Well, um, kind of hard to tell what the y-intercept is there for that one, but if I was also told, and so here's a, an extra little plot twist, an extra piece of information thrown in, that uh, if I was also told that that curve goes through the point negative 1, negative 24, then aha, now I've got something that I can work with here. In other words, I'm, I'm told that when x equals negative 1, y equals negative 24. Well, I can just substitute those values into the equation. And watch what happens when we do that. Uh, replace the y with negative 24 and replace all the x's with negative 1. Now look at that equation. There's only one variable, a. And I'll be able to solve that one probably pretty quick. Um, if I multiply those out, I kind of do all the number crunching there. I'm going to get uh, positive 8 times a on the right-hand side, and so now all i got to do is divide both sides by 8, and I figure out very quickly then that a is negative 3, and that's my uh, equation there, negative 3 times all those factors, all right? Let's look at another example here. This is a fourth-degree polynomial. Uh, looks like it's in positive orientation, and let's see, I've got an x-intercept at negative 3, uh, negative 2, and then positive 1 and positive 3, and... Um, so I can tell what my factors are going to be there, but I'm also been told that this graph has a y-intercept at positive 45. In other words, when x equals 0, y equals 45. Okay, so once again, I have a point given to me on the curve. Um, so if I set up my basic factored form right there with all the factors and the mysterious a in there, which I'm going to try to figure out, um, all I'm going to have to do is substitute some values. Incidentally, I do know that there is some kind of stretch factor going on because when I look at those factors and I see 3, 2, negative 1, negative 3 in the factors, if I multiplied all those numbers together, that would give me positive 18, which is right there on the y-axis there. I've kind of pointed it out with that little red arrow. Obviously, the y-intercept is not 18. So we know that there has been some kind of stretch factor given. And you might, with a little bit of math savviness here, you might be able to th figure out a shortcut to this process. I'll let you figure that out if you, if you can see it. But we're going to follow the same process that we just used. That is, we're going to substitute the values, um, x equals 0 and y equals 45, into the equation, and we're going to solve for a. And pretty quickly, you're going to see on the right-hand side there, I've got a times 3 times 2 times negative 1 times negative 3. Yeah, like I just said, it's, it's 18a. Um, on the right-hand side. So 45 equals 18 times A. Yeah, in a jiffy there, I figure out that A is 2.5. All right, so there's my equation, 2.5 times blah, 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 all those factors there, all right? So that's, that's the equation. So that was really nice to have that y-intercept given to us. That's a pretty special little part of an equation, as you probably already know. Well, let's summarize things, what we got so far here, okay? Uh, a little stretch factor summary here. Number one. Um, the stretch factor is a number that will control the steepness of a polynomial curve, all right? And just for conventionality, we're going to call it A. That's just what all the math books and math teachers around uh, use to call that, all right? For good reasons, but I'll, I'll, I'll stop the discussion there about that. We're going to call it A. Um, second point is that if we know what the x-intercepts are of a polynomial and we know the coordinates of any other point on the curve, we can determine the stretch factor. All we have to do is substitute in the coordinates of that point that we know into the factored form of the equation. And that makes it pretty simple to solve it for a, like we did in those two examples. Now, the examples that I gave you had x equaling 1, or negative 1, excuse me, and x equals 0. Those are pretty easy numbers, but it literally could be any point on the curve. It doesn't have to be a nice one, like 
like what we used. But uh, any other points, coordinates, will work in exactly the same way. Okay, well, I hope that was good for you. Um, uh, be well, and uh, let's go do some math. <laughs>